In this video, we use VS Code with an Azure DevOps Git repo. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Freltos. This is a continuation of my last video on Azure DevOps repos. In that video, we created branches and edited files in Azure DevOps. In this video, we take it a step further by using Git and VS Code to create branches and edit files. Before we get started, please take a second to like, subscribe, share with a friend, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Become a member of the channel for early access to videos and check out my courses on udemy.com. Your support is appreciated. Back to it. As mentioned already, this is the continuation of my previous video on Azure DevOps repos. We use the web-based editor in that example. In the real world, you're more likely to use an integrated development environment or IDE to write code. We use VS Code, Microsoft's free IDE for this example. VS Code is a very capable IDE with support for most popular programming and scripting languages. Did I mention it's free? Coming up, we're going to go over installing VS Code and installing and configuring Git. Then we clone a repo, create a branch, and push and pull updates between the local copy of the repo, and the remote copy on Azure DevOps. Let's get started with installing VS Code. Okay, let's start at the very beginning. I'll put chapter indicators below if you wanna skip ahead, but for this, we'll just start with installing VS Code. So here we are at the download page, and we'll do a user install. Once it's finished downloading, we can run it. That will start the installer. And I'm logged in as an administrator, so I'll get this message, but I can click OK and ignore it. Agree to terms. Defaults are OK for this install. We'll let it finish. Once it's complete, we can launch it. I'll make it a little bigger. When we first log in, we get different options for our theme. I'm going to select something lighter. I think that shows up better in the recordings. There we go. And I'll make it a little bit bigger. Control Shift Plus to make things bigger. So now we have VS Code set up. If we go to the command palette, which is Control Shift P, and by the way, if you're on a Mac or a different OS, all of these commands are similar. Everything I'm doing can be found in the menus above. To go to the command palette on Windows, it's Control Shift P. I'm going to search for git. Let's see if it has clone. No, there's no git clone. So let's close this. We'll go back to the web browser. This time we're in the git download site. There is a full GUI client for git. That's not what I'm using in this case. For this example, I'm just using git. We can go to the download for Windows. 64-bit is fine. Once that's done, we'll run the git installer. We can open the file. Here we'll go next. And again, the defaults are fine for this example. We just need this application installed on the computer. That way VS Code can interact with Git and use the features that Git offers. We can uncheck the view release notes and finish. Before we can use this with VS Code, we have to open up Bash and update Git with some information. The installer added Bash to this system. Git Bash. First, we have to give Git our username. And I have these instructions on a blog post I did previously. I'll include the link below. All we have to do is run the command git config dash dash global user.name, and then we'll add our username. That adds the username to the global config. So when we make changes with Git, commits for example, it knows who's making the commitment. Next, we're gonna add an email address. That command is git config dash dash global user.email. and add the email address. Let 
the version of Git we're running on this computer now has my username and email address. As we make changes with Git, that information will be embedded in those changes. We can close Bash, and let's go back into VS Code. Now we'll go Control Shift P to open up the palette, and let's search for Git. And now we have a few more Git options. That prepares our local workstation to use Git from Azure DevOps, or really any other Git-based source control system. Let's go to Azure DevOps next. I have a project, DevTest. I spelled the name correctly for this video. Let's hop over to repos. This one's been initialized already. We're in the main branch and there's no other branches. We're going to cover most of the stuff we did in the last video. I'll have the link below. This time we'll do it from VS Code. We're going over two examples of how to clone this repo in this video. The first example will clone by HTTPS path. Let's take a look at how that's done. First, we'll go to clone and then copy the path. Next, we'll open up VS Code. Open the command palette on Windows, that's Control Shift P. Type in clone or git clone. And we'll use git clone. Hit enter. Now to ask for the URL, paste in the URL we copied from Azure DevOps. Hit enter. Now I'll ask for a location of the repo. I'm going to add this to a Git folder located in my documents. Let's go to documents. And you can add this in your own location. This is just where I put mine. We'll select the repository. Now it's going to copy the repo to the local machine. But before it can do that, we have to sign in to Azure DevOps. When the project was created, I selected a private project. So we'll add our account. Once signed in, select open. And yes, we can trust the author. Now we have the main branch. We can see that in the lower left-hand side of the screen. And we also have the readme file. That's how we clone with a URL. Let's try this again with the clone option in VS Code. We're gonna close VS Code. And before we clone it again, open up File Explorer. Once open, navigate to the location you cloned the code to. Documents, Git for my example. There's the repo, dev test. There's only one file in the folder, the readme file. But if we go to view and display hidden items, we have a hidden .git folder. Open that. This is all of the source code tracking information for the repo. This is the database for Git. We don't need to change anything in here. I just want to point out that the logic used for Git is stored in the directory in a hidden folder. Let's go back to the Git folder and we'll delete this repo file. We haven't made any changes and we're going to re-download it again in the next step. We can close File Explorer and go back to Azure DevOps. Now we'll do the second example of using clone in VS Code. We'll go to clone and we have the IDE option and we have a list of different IDEs we can clone to. We'll leave it set to VS Code and clone. When prompted, open up VS Code. And it'll ask if we want to allow the extension to open up a URI. Let's select open. And again, we have to provide a local location for the repo. We'll go back to that Git folder. And open. And if we're working on multiple projects and we need to come back to this one, we can just go to File. Open Recent, and there it is. That's the two ways to clone a repo to VS Code with Azure DevOps repos. Let's move on to branches. We only have one branch, main, in this example. If we click on main in the lower left corner, we get an option to create a new branch. Let's select that. Give it a name, dev for this example. Hit Enter, and now we have two branches. Click on dev in the lower left-hand corner. We can switch back to main and go back to dev. Let's go back to Azure DevOps. If we go to branches, there's only one. This is what's meant by Git being decentralized. We made changes to the local copy, but have not pushed those changes back to Azure DevOps. Let's take care of that. We're gonna go back to VS Code. Next to the dev branch in the lower left corner is an icon with a cloud. We can publish our branch with this icon. Let's do that next. 
If you see a message asking to run git fetch periodically, you can click no to that message. Now let's go back to Azure DevOps. Let's refresh the branches. Now it shows our dev branch. Let's look at pushing changes next. Go back to VS Code and make sure you're in the dev branch. By the way, we're doing a lot of hopping back and forth between VS Code and DevOps so we can see what happens when we make changes. That's not a normal process when we're working with Git. We just want to see what's going on between the two for this example. From the dev branch, let's add a file to the branch, code.txt for this example. Notice the source control icon on the right shows one. That indicates there's one change local that has not been committed. Let's commit and push the changes next. Click on that icon. This is a two-step process. We have to commit our changes. That creates a snapshot of the changes in the local repo and then push the commits to the remote repo. Under the list of changes, we only have one here, but you can add any changes you want to commit with the plus sign. You can commit all the changes with the plus sign next to commit. Click the plus sign next to the changes you want to commit. If you modify a lot of files, you can select and stage them individually to add it to the commit. Add a message for the commit. Add a file for this example. Once the comment is added, click the check mark to commit the changes. Let's take a look back at DevOps. Go to Files and switch to the Dev branch. The file isn't there. That's because after we commit the change, we have to push the change to the remote repo. Again, this is a decentralized source control system, so we have to update DevOps with our changes. Let's go back to VS Code. There's a big icon with the word sync. That will do it. But if we click on the three dots next to source control, we have other options including push. This will push the changes from our local repo to the remote repo. Let's select that. Now go back to DevOps. We'll need to refresh. And now the file shows up in the DevOps repo. Now what happens if the branch is updated in DevOps, but not on the local computer? For example, maybe somebody else is working on the same branch and they push an update. Let's see what happens by updating the code.txt file. We'll go to edit and add a line of text. Once you're done, commit. We'll add a comment. Once that's committed, go back to VS Code. We can go into Explorer and refresh. The change isn't there. Let's go back to Source Control. This time we're going to pull from the remote repo. We'll click the three dots. A pull is like a one-way synchronization from the remote to the local. So let's go pull. Our code.txt file was updated from the remote repo. We can now see the line of text. It's important to keep your local repository up to date by periodically running git push and git pull or just synchronizing the changes. VS Code doesn't natively support pull requests. There are a couple extensions you can add, but we can create them from DevOps as shown in the last video. Let's go back to DevOps, go to pull requests, We'll create a new pull request, give it a name, add file for this example. The rest is optional, click create. Then we can go to approve and complete. We'll use a merge and won't delete the dev branch. This is a brief overview of the pull request. A production environment would have safeguards around who can approve pull requests and the number of reviewers required for approval. There may also be a code review process involved as well. For this example, we just completed the pull request by ourselves. That is how to use VS Code with Azure DevOps Git repos. I hope this helps you better understand how to use VS Code with Git. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.